and her passage will be haired red. This is the first thing that Jesus does following his 40 days in the wilderness and his temptation by Satan. He goes back to the area of Galilee and that's the region that he's from. As he's travelling around and preaching, he's realistically an itinerant preacher, going from place to place. And in Luke's Gospel, because this is quite near the beginning of Luke's Gospel and at the start of Jesus' public ministry, Jesus hasn't yet called any disciples to himself. As he goes from synagogue to synagogue and place to place, he's gaining a re good reputation for his teaching. On this particular day, he's in Nazareth, the place where he's been brought up. And as usual, when he's there, he goes to the synagogue on the Sabbath. And he reads the passage from the scroll that is given to him and then sits down. Now, in synagogues in first century Palestine, there weren't people who would be acting in the role of rabbis as we would maybe envisage them, or ministers in the church con connotations, but of course Jesus was Jewish so they wouldn't have been ministers. They had someone who was the president of the synagogue and they were responsible for making sure that the scripture was read and that worship happened. Now, worship was usually coming together to pray, to hear a piece of scripture read, and to hear it being taught. And the person, there would be people who would read it, and maybe the person who read it would teach it. Maybe it would be somebody else who would teach on it. But it would be somebody, both of those roles would be appointed by the president of the assembly, of the synagogue grouping, people that were in the synagogue, and they would also appoint a person who would teach. And in Church of Scotland Presbyterian analogy, the president of the synagogue was the equivalent of our session clerk. And it would just be someone from the General, Assem General Assembly, I shouldn't say that in the Church of Scotland, from the gathered assembly who would be invited to teach. It probably would be a man, but work with me here. Usually that would be the regular congregation. No looking to a trained professional to do that. And because Jesus was visiting, but he was local, was his mum in the synagogue that day? And he had a good reputation for his preaching and teaching in the region, it would have been quite natural for the president of the synagogue to invite him to lead on that day. So Jesus reads and preaches. It was an honour granted by the congregation. I wonder, did they want to hear something which didn't challenge their thinking, which didn't stretch their imagination, which confirmed their way of thinking about the world? the status quo in which they lived in, the echo chamber of the village conversations they would have. And I wonder if that's why they got a little bit ge annoyed with Jesus when Jesus didn't do that. He told them what, when he sat, which was the indication he was about to teach the scripture that he'd read, that the what he'd read had been fulfilled in the hearing of the congregation. Here he realistically, you could say, was setting out his manifesto of how God's kingdom, which he was the anointed one of God to bring in, was going to come into being. And, he real and then he would spend the next three years of his public ministry showing how that was going to happen. Through his preaching and his teaching, his healing and performing of miracles, all that that meant, that scripture had been fulfilled 
in the hearing of this congregation in Nazareth that he was the anointed one of God and he was sent to set free the prisoners. Literal prisoners, but also those who were imprisoned by poverty, through oppression, by disability. But though people were astonished uh, by Jesus' words, they did not take kindly to them. They know his father. They watched him grow up. Maybe they even saw his early workmanship as he became a carpenter and he helped initially Joseph and then later on was able to do things on his own and helping people build their houses, their barns, their tables, their chairs. How could this man in front of them sitting down to teach possibly be God's anointed one? How could he, in this backwater of Naz born in Bethlehem but brought up in Nazareth to nobody's, possibly set the prisoner free? To make it worse, Jesus then reminds them through pointing towards Elisha and Elijah's miracle that God's way of setting people free from prison isn't always for those inside the club, in their case, the people of Israel. And Jesus throughout his public ministry would include, heal and teach to those on the outside of the people of Israel or in, on the outside of normal society. Either on the outside because of a disease they had, for example, dreaded skin diseases of uh, among other things, leprosy, or their gender, or them being Gentiles. Jesus would set them free, and in so doing, show God's love is far, far wider than one community. And the people in that Nazareth synagogue did not like that, and they tried to lynch him. And somehow they were so enraged in this crowd of trying to haul him up the mountain and throw him off that he was able to slip away. And he continued to set people free and following God the Father's path for him as God the Son. I wonder, what is your reaction to Jesus' suggestion, he will set people free, especially if they may be people with no connection with the church or no connection even tentatively to the Christian faith. Will you follow him or will you be in that crowd who longs to haul him on the, up the mountain and throw him off the cliff? Amen. Let's once more come before God in prayer. Let us pray. God of all hopefulness, praise we have and continue to offer. Worship we have given and continue to give. For in you we find hope for today knowing we have a bright and secure future in your glorious presence. Fill us with your hope that in these days we may be signs of hope for your people. Sign bearing one, signs which cheer your world are around us, days stretching out, first leaves of snowdrop inching through barren ground. Covid cases beginning to decline. May a gratitude be on our lips and in our hearts for these and the many, many signs the kingdom is near us. Kingdom building Christ, we bring before you those who long to receive and know that your kingdom is here on earth as in heaven. 
those held captive by the cycle of poverty. Lord, in your mercy release them. Those held captive by anger. Lord, in your mercy release them. Those held captive by lack of vision. Lord, in your mercy release them. Those held captive by greed. Lord, in your mercy, release them. Those how held captive by clinging tightly to power. Lord, in your mercy, release them. Releasing one Father, Son, Spirit. Set each person free of all which is a barrier for them being truly the person you made and call them to be. We are structured in a church or society, prevent inclusion. Change our perception towards your will, that it may be done here as it is in heaven. Heavenly God, we bless and praise you that you are in control of this world. Broken as it may seem, it is yours and yours alone. Today we bring before you the situation in Ukraine and we ask for your wisdom, grace and peace beyond the leaders of our world. Lord God, we now, in a few moments of quiet, bring before you the people, places and situations which are in our minds and on our hearts today. God of all hopefulness, praise we have and continue to offer. Worship we have given and continue to give. For in you we find our hope for today and know we have a bright and secure future in your glorious presence. Receive these our prayers, spoken and written on our hearts, offered in openness and trust that you receive and answer each one in ways we can never fully understand through Christ our Lord. Amen.